I have been experimenting. Now, as some of you might already know, and for those of you who don't know, I'm an old bachelor living in an RV with my little dog who doesn't give a shih tzu. There she is underneath the table. That's Georgie. And I have recently decided to go vegan, but I haven't bought all of my things that I need yet. But I uh, something I did get this past week was some lentils. I don't know if you can see them in here. I don't even know what they're supposed to look like. But they were orange to start with, so I'm looking for orange. But maybe it's all of these little pea-shaped things. Anyhow, I'm making lentil soup for the first time in my life. I've got carrots and celery and garlic. I like garlic. And a few spices that I picked up. You know, when you work all day, sometimes it's pretty hard to get a full meal happening. Especially when you're an old meat and potatoes kind of guy like I am. And I'm switching to the vegan lifestyle. So, um, today for my lunch I was kind of, uh, like I said, I haven't gotten all of my grocery list yet. But something I did have was walnuts and craisins. And um, that's what I took for my lunch today. I took lots of them. And a bagel with hummus on it. And that was my lunch. And right now it's 8 o'clock. It's almost 8.30 at night. I'm just getting around to making supper. And I'm going to have a bowl of lentil soup. Not sure how good it's going to taste, but we'll find out. And I'm going to have a toasted tomato sandwich. This is my pepper shaker. A recycled uh, ibuprofen bottle. Works fabulous. Stick a little salt in there. I've never claimed to be a cook, but you know, I've been eating my own cooking for a long time. No complaints from this department. In fact, I think my cooking is tastes a whole lot better than most restaurants that I've ever eaten in. I make a wicked French toast, and I know that I can make a vegan French toast, which I will show you the moment I experiment with it. But I still need some ingredients to make that happen. And along with my French toast, I will make vegan bacon out of carrots. And uh, you can make it out of rice paper even. I've tasted the carrot ones and you know what? You can't even tell the difference between carrot bacon and pork bacon. And you know, that was the turning point for me when my friend gave me this stuff and I said to myself, you know what? There is no excuse for anybody on the earth to not become vegan. Reason number one, all of these animals that are being killed needlessly, I'm dead set against it. Like they go through torture like you would not believe. And if you haven't seen any of these videos, that some people have put on YouTube of the stress that these chickens and cattle and pigs go through and sheep. It's just horrendous. And if a person's got any compassion in his bones whatsoever, you can't watch these videos and continue eating meat. Like it's ludicrous. And it's got to be taken one step further. It's not only the eating of meat. The dairy cattle are going through things that you would not believe. Now just imagine if you are a mother or even a father for that matter and the moment your child is born it's taken away. Not just taken away, it's grabbed by the legs and it's thrown and it's abused. Meanwhile, the, the cow is just crying her head off for weeks and weeks. There's no excuse for that. So we're drinking milk from this cow that has had to have given birth so as to be able to produce milk. So I stopped drinking milk several years ago simply because 
It tastes like crap, first of all, and I know why it tastes like crap. It's because of all the stress that the animal undergoes as a result of having her calf taken away from her and being chained to a steel post day in and day out just to produce milk for all of you milk drinkers. So the taste alone is what drove me away from drinking milk. And I have since substituted with almond milk, which is, first of all, there are no animals at risk as a, as a result, and it tastes absolutely delicious. There's uh, the meat reason, you know, just the, the, the slaughter of beef and, and sheep and chickens. Chickens don't taste like they used to when I was a kid either. Like, it, they taste like rubber. Why is that? Well, because they're going from being a, a chick to a full-grown chicken within meat, a meat bird within six weeks of its life. Like, it grows so fast, its muscles don't even have time to catch up. It can't even stand on its own legs. So if, imagine, if, if you were force-fed to become a Goodyear blimp, try standing up then. All they're concerned about is money. It's all about the money. Nobody cares about the rights of the animals. So as a result, I said, well, I'm not eating eggs anymore either. So that's more or less what it takes to become a vegan, is you stop meat, you stop all dairy products, including cheese. Now I know people love cheese. I love cheese. But I quit eating cheese roughly two months ago. And my reason for stopping eating cheese is that I sense that it doesn't taste like it used to either. Then when I, I saw some of these videos on, on what happens to dairy cattle, that was the clincher, you know. I, it, it solidified my decision. So no eggs, no cheese, no milk, no cream for my coffee. And um, so I'm eating nuts and lentils and beans and... Uh, I'm going to be uh, making my own muffins and cakes and cookies and so on in my slow cooker. And uh, it's all going to be dairy and egg free. And I'm going to invite you to come and join me because I'm, I'm a, a newbie at this. But you know, this smells pretty good. And uh, if I could get my spoon to sop some of this up here. Just gonna have a quick taste. <clears throat> Ay caramba! <laughs> it tastes pretty good. And it's not even cooked yet. Folks, I'm not here to preach to you, but I think we've got to take a look at what's going on in the world. I'm no expert, well, far from being an expert on any of this stuff. I'm just a novice, just learning. I can't even remember a tenth of all the information that I've read and videos that I've watched. But you know, it starts with, if there's any compassion in your heart for these animals who live a horrendous life for the sake of those of us who, but I can't live without eating cheese, or I've got to have my bacon, or I've got to have my eggs. I have my steak, I have my burgers. For all of these people who say these things, I used to be one of these people. I was a meat and potatoes guy all my life. Love burgers. But when it comes right, when it comes right down to it, you've got to make the decision for the sake of the animals. Then make the decision for the sake of your own health. What is our medical system doing? They are overrun with diabetes cases, chronic heart conditions, obesity, and all they do is pump pills into you. So you know what? If you want to continue supporting the meat and dairy industry, you're also supporting Big Pharma because the day is going to come. You can be sure of it. The day is going to come when your health deteriorates to the point where you're going to have to take all these pills for diabetes and, and to thin your blood, to thicken your blood, to make your heart rate right, to adjust your cholesterol, your sugar levels, and all that garbage. 
I'm 63 years old, and for some reason, I think it has to do with the fact that I have always been active. Not that I play sports or anything, but I work hard, physically hard, every day. I'm also an artist, and I think that having an artistic brain enables a person to process things differently. Because, you know, I'm as healthy as a horse, and I'm 63, and now I'm even going to become healthier. But for all of you people who have been eating burgers and eggs and steak and bacon, cheese, drinking milk, processed foods, things that come out of a package, if you shop out of convenience as opposed to health consciously, you are going to be supporting Big Pharma as a result of having supported the beef, chicken, and dairy industries all your life. So it's not too late to switch. You know what? Your cholesterol levels will uh, get to a, a normal setting. I don't even know what that setting is supposed to be. But I assure you of this. I don't go to a doctor very often. In fact, I have no intention of going to a doctor ever again. That's how confident I am. But it's been quite a few years since I've been to a doctor. And the last two times I went for a physical uh, checkup, uh, two different doctors over a period of, let's say, 10 years, um, five years in between. The last one was about five years ago that I went for my medical examination. And, you know, the doctor asked what, what I, you know, how come, how come, he says, you know, your cholesterol levels and all of these readings that I've got, you're like a 30-year-old kid. What is it you do? I told him, well, first thing I do is I remove worry from my life. I don't have any worry. So I don't have any stress. Man, this soup looks pretty darn good. And I drink a bottle of brandy a week. And I roll my own cigarettes. You will never catch me smoking a filtered cigarette. Never. I've been rolling my own cigarettes for as long as I can remember. There. And, well, since I'm 25, I've been rolling my own cigarettes. I used to smoke filtered cigarettes. And I developed a cough that you would not believe. It was so harsh that I had to wrap my arms around my back so as to prevent the feeling of being stabbed by daggers when I coughed. That's how bad it was. Well, one would think, hey, you should quit smoking. Well, instead of quitting smoking, I switched from filtered cigarettes to rolling my own cigarettes. Within two weeks, my cough disappeared and I have not coughed since. But back to the story of my doctors saying how healthy I was. Bottle of brandy a week roll my own cigarettes, eat healthy, keep a positive attitude, and now I'm eating even healthier than I ever ate before, which means that my health is going to be that much better. Man, oh man, if this tastes any better by the time it's finished, because it keeps getting better each time I taste it, it's just amazing. I can't believe that I made soup for the first time in my life. If I can do it, anybody can do it. My meals have been pretty simple. Goulash, burgers, French toast, mm, eggs, omelets. Now I'll make all this stuff without the eggs and without the dairy. Anyhow, it's been a long week. I was, uh, as you can tell by my hands, I've been painting. I'm just going to pull it a little bit off to the side here so it doesn't boil like so. That's one thing I don't like about a gas stove is that you can't adjust it any lower than that. That's too bad. Um, right at this very moment, I am having a case of deja vu. In fact, I dreamt this, this 
story right now. I dreamt this a long, long time ago. And the reason I remember it is because of the location of the blue flame that you see to the left. So, I don't know if that's in my imagination, but I'm going to shut this baby off. I'm going to put the lid on that, and I'm just going to let it sit here for the next 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, with any luck, I will have a delicious supper. So voila! Well, well, talking soup. I hope that Bacon Cowboy and his talking soup has inspired you to consider some of the points he's made. He does make some provocative points, so he does. Realistically, though, we don't expect meat, eggs, and dairy-eating folks to take it upon themselves to sit through our videos from start to finish, if you know what I mean. That being said, however, assuming you yourself are a vegan who has been trying to get some of your friends and family to consider undertaking the vegan lifestyle. Well, we urge you to have them watch our videos so that they can see for themselves that ordinary, everyday people are making, yeah, they're making the switch to living a vegan lifestyle. Just like us. And I, for one, see it as a no-brainer. You know what I mean? Now, not all people will do it for the sake of the animals. And we know that. Many people have become vegan to improve their health. And it's a fact. Consuming meat, eggs, and dairy products contributes greatly to poor overall health. Things that a lot of people sort of take for granted, such as having digestive issues, trouble sleeping, depression, body aches and pains, and unclear thinking ability if you know what I mean. These are definitely areas in which a person will experience immediate improvement with upon changing their eating habits from how they presently eat to implementing a vegan lifestyle. Yeah. Not to mention much more serious issues that can also become life-threatening. Yeah, life-threatening as a result of eating meat eggs, and dairy products. As you're likely aware, there's an increased potential of developing diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, to name a few, as a direct result of eating meat, eggs, and dairy products. So we ask that you, as a fellow vegan, to help spread the word about this simple clan of vegan cowboys and hillbillies who are simply trying to reach as many people as we can. Yeah, people on the internet wide web of worlds. We want to reach as many as we can. People who might be hoping for a better place for us all. And especially for the animals who suffer and die to accommodate people's taste buds. You can help us Spread the word by sharing this good video with your friends. Yeah. And of course, we hope you subscribe to the channel, if you know what I mean. We've got some amazing recipes coming down the pike that we wouldn't want you to miss. No. Including some fabulous homemade vegan desserts. And most certainly, we do want to hear from you. So kindly take a moment and leave us a comment in the box below. We appreciate knowing that our backwoods methods have sparked interest and intrigue within the hearts of people from around the world. Now on a more serious note, do you think Vegan Cowboy's lentil soup will win any awards? You'll find the answer to this and perhaps many other questions that you have by tuning in to episode two. You'll find the link in the comment box below. So you will.